The Thank system of lust has destroyed, destroyed your bloodline. Informative and powerful video, so please get your notebook pad and notes, and I want you to listen in to the things that I'm going to discuss. I'm going to roll out a series. It's going to be titled "The Systems of Satan." Um, he has multiple different systems that are very effective, um, and that are actually destroying you. Okay, and your bloodline, your family. So I'm going to get right into this thing the system of lust there are many systems that the devil sets up in each family okay and i believe in this series i'm going to touch on seven okay we will we will first discuss the system of lust this is a system put in place for most families at a very young age there are different ways lust is introduced to the bloodline the first is going to be perversion of older family members okay perversion of outsiders so like your friends entertainment the things that your kids are watching on television perversion within the family is a major one um a lot of family members would introduce their younger siblings or siblings in general to erotic movies a lot of family members introduce other family members to self-pleasuring themselves okay um this can also be done by your friends your friends you and your friends will have these types of discussions uh, if a parent has many boyfriends or girlfriends, that can also be an entry point. Now, if you have a four-year-old daughter, okay, and I'm speaking for a mom, and you have had over 10 men in the house, you're having sex in their home. You know how many spirits are on you and your daughter? Don't worry. I'll wait. I'll let you think about that. Okay. Many people believe that they're being attacked by the devil. The devil is first off, not omnipresent. Okay. The devil is very selective. I am so tired of seeing people say the devil is attacking them. You're not even doing anything to get the devil's attention. 90% of the people that say this, even pastors are not um, being attacked by the devil. You're being attacked by your bad decisions. You're being attacked by your pride, by your arrogance, by all the things you have not repented for, all the bloodline curses that you have failed to break, the systems in your own life that you have failed to break, the lies that you tell, the witchcraft that you've done, all the men and women that you slept with, all of the spirits that's attached to you as a result of you sleeping with men that like other men. You all are so delusional about the devil and you're under warfare. Real women and true servants of God experience deep higher levels of warfare when they're actually saved. Think about Job. And that's all I'm going to tell you. The people in the Bible were doing everything that God called them to do. They went through the highest level of warfare. You all are not experiencing warfare. You're experiencing a harvest of the seeds that you sow. And I don't know why y'all don't get that. You don't even pray enough for the devil to know who you are. Many of you are victim to different demonic systems and infrastructures that have been put into place before you were even conceived. Most young people that struggle heavily with self-pleasing and erotic movies develop a stronghold of lust this is why when you see the strong man in your in your dreams he is incredibly buff and look like all he take is protein because that's what he's come your you've been your sin has fed these demons that's what happens. Your sin feeds a strong man. That's why he gets so buff and muscular. Every time you watch an erotic movie, he just sitting back in the sidelines in the spirit room like with the bird man hands, you know, yeah, because he's happy because you're feeding him. Your sin is feeding demons. Your hatred, your offense, your pride, your unrepentant sins is feeding this demon. There will, there will be no need for the devil to attack you because that system that's been put in place is working quite well. In order to be a servant of God, you must fast on your own. You must have a prayerful life and you must read the Bible. 90% of people do not do this daily, not even your favorite pastor. Not even your favorite pastor. I'm going to say that one more time. Not even your favorite pastor. So you already disqualified. Perversion with a child alters the way the child thinks. It alters their thoughts. Most people will not repeatedly meditate on the word to break these habits. The Bible, God tells us that we are to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every time you have a lustful thought, you are to repent, first of all, and cast it down, second of all. 
self-pleasure, um, behaviors of erotic movies and multiple sexual partners will always keep you bound. If you've been touched by family, this is another secret weapon in the kingdom of darkness. Not only was that a sacrifice to Molech, but you were also defiled spiritually. Most people become hypersexual after being touched sexually. Most people never talk about these things, so they grow up with very bad demonic patterns or sexual immorality due to incest. They don't expose it. They don't seek prayer, deliverance, therapy, um, and they... They never talk about these things. When you express and expose these things, it loses all of its validity. It loses all of its power. Um, and so these systems that have been put into place have worked against you and your bloodline for centuries. When you have a stronghold of lust, this is something that may take you a year to break. Because, And I say this because a lot of you think that you're going to a good church and you're not. You're, you can't go to your your pastors and get prayer, deliverance. Pastors are getting away from all of these things. Most of the time, it's just a good message. And if you're getting a good message from a church, that is not enough to sustain you. You must develop your own authentic relationship with God on your own. If you were to do a Google search on prayer, do you know how many Bible verses are going to come up? And it's always going to direct you to prayer, not your church. It is your responsibility to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. And so a lot, I've met a lot of people, a lot of very wicked people, and there is a pattern in their life and in their kids' life. A lot of you have little kids. I'm talking two, three years old. They are already self-pleasing themselves. I met a girl when I was doing mentoring. She was a witch. I believe her name was Marlene. She made the, the hair. I'm not a hairy person, but the hair, the little bit of fuzz that's on the back of my neck stand up. Um, this woman disgusts me. Anybody that does witchcraft, they're repulsive to me. Um, they're annoying to me. And the reason being is because they all, they have this same they have the same aroma. It's this aroma that they don't know what I'm talking about. It's this aroma of false uh, innocence. None of them are. And I and it's so funny to me because I played a game quite well with a lot of them. We going to all play dumb. That's all. We're we going to get in a box and play stupid. Um, but her, she had like a two-year-old and he was already doing these things. Well, she's already defiled herself by way of witchcraft, by all the sexual rituals. Then you conceive a child, you've already destroyed this child. So imagine somebody who doesn't do witchcraft, but you have a, a bunch of family members who are saved. Your mama not saved. Then you say you, you and your mama go to church, but your mama ain't broke none of the generational curses. Y'all all deceived. So if yo if if Big Mama struggled with lust, she never broke it. Then her mama, then you know she conceives, and then she had all these sexual partners and all these different men, and then you just think going to church is enough. No, you have to break these things by prayer, by fasting. You have to break generational curses. And so I'm also going to tell you all, you need to watch my content. I want you all to stop getting into the comment section and asking me questions that I've already answered. I have so many videos. There are so many treasures in heaven that have been stored up for me as a result of what I'm doing through these videos. And so 99% of your answers um, are found in these videos. Watch my self-deliverance playlist. Begin to meditate on the word of God. Romans 12 and 1 is extremely powerful. A lot of you need to actually rededicate your life to God because some of you are going to a church and you think you're saved. You're not. You're going to stumble across this video. Okay. And if you think it's a joke, just think about your life. Romans 12 and 1 is powerful. Galatians 5 and 16. Romans 13, 14. This is so powerful. Listen to this. It said, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Do you know how powerful that is? Do you know how potent that scripture is? Man, what? It said, baby, put on the whole Lord Jesus Christ. Not half of him. It said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I would suggest that you fast not under 12 hours. 12 hours or more, begin to do this on a consistent basis. Um, you will see that this system in your life will be broken in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, 